Welcome students. We are coming to you from the Court Community Outreach Committee and the Legislative Liaison Committee of Santa Clara County Superior Court to celebrate with you Constitution Day, which is celebrated on September 17th of every year. You're going to be hearing from three judges, first Judge Rudy and then Judge Ibarra and myself, I'm Judge Julia Elogimento, so that we can share with you the importance of this document, which guides us every single Thank you for being part of this presentation and we look forward to talking with you. Every year we go out to schools to talk to students like you about the Constitution. This year we have decided to have a recorded program so we can share it with more students and we really appreciate you being involved in this. So I'd like to talk to you today about the Constitution. September the 17th, is Constitution Day. On that day, we celebrate the signing of the Constitution, and we also celebrate people who have gained citizenship to become citizens of the United States. It's a very, very special day, and we appreciate you being part of the Constitution. So when we talk about the Constitution, you might say, is there just one? Well, no, there are, there's, there's more than one Constitution. Every single state in the Union, in the United States, has their own constitution. Here in California, we have a California constitution, but all of the states are covered by the Constitution of the United States of America. So the United States Constitution and the California Constitution are the two that really affect us here in California. Those are pictures of the Constitution. The Constitution here on the left is the United States Constitution, and the Constitution on the right is the one for California. These are very old documents, and they're in museums now. It's very interesting, a lot of people don't know this, but the first Constitution for the state of California was written entirely in Spanish and actually had to be translated. But the original constitution for the state of California is the one that we use today as it's been modified over the years. So what, what is the United States Constitution? Well, the Constitution, it's a set of rules. They were originally written back in 1787 after the Revolutionary War. It's what everybody agreed that we wanted to have as rules on how we were going to run our new country. And it has the rules that we live by today. Who wrote the Constitution? See the pictures up here with the little inkwells uh, ink with the quills? Back in those days, they actually wrote with a feather that you would make a little point on and dip in ink. And so that's what that is. Those are uh, ink uh, bottles with a, a feather quill in it. And the original Constitution was probably written with that kind of a pen. The Constitution was written by some of these key people. The founding fathers were James Madison, Alexander Hamilton, Benjamin Franklin, and George Washington. Why is the Constitution so important? Well, it's so important because it, it provides the rights for the people and the rules for the government. The Constitution gives us a balance of power in our government. It balances the power between individual people and our government. The balance of power between the national government, which is the government of the United States, and the state government, which is the government of the state of California. It balances the power between the people, federal government, and the state government. The balance of power also is between the different branches of government. Why is the balance of power so important? Well, the founding fathers, they were very concerned about having too much power in one part of the government's hands. And they felt if they could spread the power around to make rules, to enforce rules, and to interpret rules, that it would provide a, a safety net 
to prevent one part of the government from becoming all powerful over other parts of the government. If nobody has all the power, it's fair for everybody and it creates freedom. Why did we create the Constitution? Well, America was a colony of Great Britain and Great Britain controlled us, but we wanted to be independent. We wanted to be able to make our own rules and we ended up fighting a war with Great Britain and we won. But after we won, then we needed to figure out how we were going to rule ourselves. John Adams, he was one of the founding fathers and one of the things that he said that still to this very day is extremely important is that you will never know how much it cost my generation to preserve your freedom. I hope you will make a good use of it. That's John Adams' quote. Hi, boys and girls. I'm Judge Ibarra, also from Santa Clara County. And I wanna tell you that this is the, one of the most favorite things I get to do in my job. I love seeing your smiling faces in my courtroom when classes come to visit, but unfortunately we can't do that. We can't be in person uh, today. Um, so I'm hoping this video, our little discussion about the Constitution will be interesting to you. Thank you for joining us. What is special about the Constitution? Well, it was new and amazing. Uh, it didn't call for a king, so there would be no ruler who would be in charge because of birthright as they had in England. And uh, we decided we would choose who would govern us. Not only that, we would choose for how long they would govern us. We decided we would elect that person uh, and they would be called uh, our president or our leader. The president doesn't make all the laws and he wouldn't be all powerful because we would also elect people who spoke for us on national issues who would go to our nation's capital in DC. So not just the president, but senators and members of the House of Representatives. The Constitution included revolutionary ideas like we could say whatever we wanted, which is called freedom of speech. We could write whatever we wanted, which is called freedom of the press. We could hang out with whoever we wanted, which is called freedom of assembly. And we could practice whatever religion we wanted, which is called freedom of religion. These once new and amazing ideas have now been added to constitutions all over the world just because we uh, started with it. And so now these once revolutionary ideas are now common thanks to our Constitution. What are the parts of our Constitution? Well, there are three main parts, the preamble, seven articles, and 27 amendments. The articles, which are the middle of it, are as follows. Article one talks about the legislative branch. Article two talks about the executive branch. Article three talks about the judicial branch. Article four talks about states and citizenship. Article five talks about constitutional amendments or how to change the constitution. Article six talks about many things, including um, the fact that the constitution is the law of the land. Um, and Article 7 talks about ratification or how the Constitution would be uh, voted into the law of the land of the United States. What is the preamble? A preamble is an introduction to a document that explains its purpose. So for the purposes of the Constitution, the introduction, uh, the preamble, explains why the Constitution was written. Now this is an exact quote from the United States Constitution, and it's written in super fancy language that we don't normally use, so I'm gonna try to break it down for you. It says that the people wanted to form a more perfect union, or unite the states, to establish justice, or to make sure that things are fair, to ensure domestic tranquility, or to, or to not fight with each other, uh, to provide for the common defense, or to jointly protect themselves from other countries to promote the general welfare, or to take care of everyone, and to secure the blessings of liberty to ourselves and our posterity, or to ensure freedom for themselves 
and their future generations. And so that is why the Constitution was written. How many branches of government did the Articles of the Constitution create? Three. There are three branches of government so that no one person or group could have all the power or control of the government. The three branches of government are the legislative branch, the executive branch, and the judicial branch. Our Constitution balanced the government, which meant that each branch, uh, um, between each branch were separation of powers and checks and balances. Separation of powers meant that each branch had authority and responsibility over a different part of government. And checks and balances meant that each branch had a way of pushing back on the other branches if they thought it was doing something wrong. Now, why did our founding fathers think of doing this? Because they knew that governing is easy when everyone trusts each other. But our government is designed to work even if no one trusts each other. So separation of powers and checks and balances keep any person or group from getting too powerful. The executive branch. Federally, that means the president. In our California state, that means our governor. The executive branch has the power to enforce the law. They can check or balance the legislative branch by vetoing or saying no uh, to laws that are passed by that branch. And they can check or balance the judicial branch by uh, appointment. They appoint the judges in the judicial branch. The legislative branch may override a presidential veto by passing a law with a two-thirds vote in both the Senate and House of Representatives. What that means is if the president doesn't like a law passed by the legislative branch, uh, but uh, the legislative branch is so passionate that they think this law is right, if they can get two-thirds of their members of the Senate and the House of Representatives uh, to vote for it, um, they can override uh, the presidential veto so they can check back on the president even though he said no. And now, boys and girls, I'm honored to present a cameo video by our California Lieutenant Governor Eleni Kunalakis on her thoughts on the Constitution. Hello, fifth graders from Santa Clara County. My name is Eleni Kunalakis. I'm Lieutenant Governor of California and I'm the first woman ever elected to this position before. I'm so happy to be here with you on your Constitution Day. Normally, I have kids coming through my office all the time, and we talk about the Constitution, we talk about government, we talk about democracy, but of course this year, with COVID-19, everyone needs to be taking extra precautions so the visiting groups are not coming through. That's why I'm so happy to be able to be with you at least through this great virtual program. Uh, now, I know you're hearing from judges and maybe you're also hearing from members of the legislature. I represent the executive branch. I'm a statewide elected officer, lieutenant governor, and I wanna talk to you a little bit about my responsibilities. So first, not every state in the country has a lieutenant governor, but most of them do. And in a way, it's a little bit like being vice president. If the governor of California is out of the state, or if he for some reason is unable to execute his duties at the moment, the lieutenant governor steps in to fill the gap. So it's sort of like being the backup plan. But there are other things that go along with my job that I really enjoy doing. And one of them has to do with education. I serve on the board of trustees that oversees the California State University system. I also serve on the Board of Regents that oversees the University of California region. And in this capacity, I spend a lot of time thinking about kids like you and how to make it more accessible for you to go on to college if that is what you aspire to do. I also serve on something called the State Lands Commission. And I work to protect the coast of California from expanded oil drilling, because let's face it, most Californians don't want to see more oil drilling off the coast of California, because if there's an accident, 
and oil spills, it can create enormous environmental damage to our state. And then the other thing I do, and this is actually kind of special for me, because I used to be an ambassador, a United States ambassador. And I hope some of you know what that job does. It's another really great job. Maybe you can learn about on another day. But what I did is I lived overseas in Europe and I re represented the United States abroad. So when I came into this job, the governor of California, Governor Gavin Newsom, asked me to serve as California's representative for international affairs and trade, using my skills as a diplomat and former ambassador to meet with people from around the world, to talk about the issues that we care about together and find ways to work together, whether it's in business or trade or in cooperation in combating things like climate change. So let me just end by saying this. The Constitution of the United States of America and the Constitution of the state of California are incredibly important because what they do is it, it sets up the rules, the rules that will keep us all able to work together to govern ourselves and to keep our democracy strong. Sometimes we need to change those rules as a society when things emerge that are unfair. But most of the time, the elements of the US Constitution and the Constitution of the state of California keep us safe and allow us to live and work in peace, to pursue our dreams, and to live with liberty and freedom and justice for all. The legislative branch. Federally, that's the Senate and the House of Representatives. In the California state, that's the Senate and the Assembly. The legislative branch has the power to make laws. They can impeach and try the president, judges, or other federal officers for committing a crime. Did you know that in our history, in our nation's history, there have been three presidents who've been impeached and charged with crimes by the House of Representatives? but all were acquitted or found not guilty by the Senate. And an impeachment process was started against one other president, but he resigned before it finished. I'm so excited to present the following cameo videos from Congresswoman Zoe Lofgren and California State Assembly members, Evan Lowe, Kansan Chu, and Robert Rivas on their thoughts on the Constitution. Uh, it's really the foundation of America. We, we salute the flag because that's a symbol of the country. But what really is the country is about is not any flag or any pageantry. It's about the Constitution and about the law. The Constitution is the most important law there is because all the other laws have to fit within the rules that are in the Constitution. And even though there were things in the Constitution that were wrong then when it was written, like slavery was allowed, if you can believe it. There are principles that allowed the law to grow so that now that we have a freer country, the Constitution still works. And I'll give you an example. You cannot um, deprive an American or anyone here of their life, their liberty, uh, or their property without due process of law. Well, what does that mean? It means whoever wants to do that to you has to follow the rules and it has to be fair. You can't, it's not like a dictatorship where they can just come and take your house or take your mother away. No, there has to be due process of law. Well, I keep the constitution with me at all times. Um, because uh, I have it in my purse. Also, you can get a Constitution app on your iPhone, so I have that as well. Um, and I use it uh, to think about what I'm seeing. Is the administration doing something that actually is regulated by the Constitution? Are they acting improperly? And unfortunately, recently, that has occurred. Uh, or is a bill that I'm working on does that really fit within the criteria of the Constitution? For example, right now, 
I'm working on a bill to reform the immigration courts. Well, Article 1 allows us, the Congress, to create inferior courts. But the question is, how do you do that? And who are the principal off officers? So this gives the guidance on that, on things that you want to do. It's very important. I hope you all read it. Hi there. I'm Assemblymember Evan Lowe, representing Silicon Valley in our state's capital. I am super excited for Constitution Day because I was formerly an instructor at De Anza Community College teaching American government from 7 a.m. on Mondays through Thursdays. So I was asked the question, what do you think is the most important part of the United States Constitution? My answer, balance of powers, the executive, legislative, and judicial. Now more than ever, we see how important these balance of powers are with respect to our democracy. Thank you for your engagement, and I wish you all a very happy Constitution Day. Good evening, everyone. My name is Kansen Chu, and it is my honor to represent District 25 of the State Assembly, which include the city of Milpitas, Santa Clara, Newark, Fremont, and San Jose. I hope everyone is safe and healthy. Thank you, Honorable Judge Ibera, for inviting me here to join you and everyone in celebrating the Constitution Day. The Constitution is the foundation that our freedom has continued to build upon. And as an immigrant from Taiwan, I came to the United States as a graduate student studying engineering. I then worked as an engineer at IBM for 18 years before entering into politics, serving on the various school board, San Jose City Council, and now the State Assembly. The country has given me the freedom to explore many opportunities and ultimately dedicating my life to public service. In that sense, the U.S. Constitution means everything to me. First, as an immigrant and now a public servant. The U.S. Constitution contains the basic value that our founder believes in. However, it is the build of rights that is well respected and copy around the world. The Bill of Rights gives Americans important personal and civil rights. It also provides equal protections to each one of us before the law, regardless who you are. As a public servant, I am reminded of the Constitution each and every day in my work when I propose a bill or my discussion with my colleague, or in my service to our constituent. The idea of equal under the eyes of the law and that everyone deserves equal treatments are values that I live by and I work to uphold every day as a state elected official. In my work, I do not take lightly the reality that many still do not have the rights and freedom they deserve in our country. And I continue to work toward the changes I want to see. Each time we cited the Pledge of Allegiance, I was always rejoice at the final word with liberty and justice for all, which are the most important foundation of the U.S. Constitution. The six words may sound simple and easy, but they weren't easy to achieve, and there is still much work to be done. As we celebrate the anniversary of the U.S. Constitution, let's all committed to upholding it. Stand against those who try to undermine it and continue to push for 
true equality for all. Thank you all for joining today. I wish you wellness, happiness, and safety. Peace to all of us. What I like most about the United States Constitution is the long history of our Constitution and, and what it represents to us as Americans. Our Constitution is the oldest active Constitution in the world. It's existed for 233 years, has been active for 231 years, and in our 231 year history, uh, we have come a very, very long way. Uh, what has brought us together, what has held us together, what has made us the greatest country in the world are the ideas uh, and the principles written in our Constitution. And the two principles that I value the most uh, is our understanding of equality uh, and of freedom. Uh, under the United States Constitution, uh, we are all created equal. And as equals, we all possess certain freedoms, rights rights that um, we have been given uh, and endowed with uh, or naturally given, uh, like our right to life, to liberty, to the pursuit of happiness. Uh, under the United States Constitution, these rights and freedoms are not given to us by our government, but they're protected by our government. The Constitution is so much more than just words on paper. Uh, its intent was to create ways for all of us to work and live in peace together, uh, to respect and care for one another, uh, for you, for you to respect and care for your family members, your friends, uh, your classmates, uh, and all of your neighbors, uh, and to do this every single day. So although we celebrate Constitution Day on September 17th, every day is supposed to be Constitution Day. And finally, my favorite branch, the judicial branch. We have the power to interpret laws. We can decide that an action taken by the president or the executive branch is unconstitutional. And so that's how we push back on the executive branch. And we can decide that a law created by the legislative branch is unconstitutional. And that's how we push back on the legislative branch. But the legislative branch can propose constitutional amendments. So if they feel passionately that a law that has been uh, called unconstitutional by the judicial branch, if they feel passionately that that, that is an appropriate uh, rule uh, to govern us, they can propose a constitutional amendment um, to change that. And now here's Ju uh, Judge Julia Elijah Mento to discuss the constitutional amendments and why the Constitution is important to you. Thank you so much for watching. Hello again, students. My name is Judge Julia Alojimento, and I'm going to be talking to you first about the amendments to the Constitution. And you might ask, why are there amendments to the Constitution? Well, our founding fathers, including George Washington, recognized that the Constitution was not perfect at the time it was drafted, but allowing for amendments made it something that could be adopted and yet changed. Even George Washington recognized uh, and stated, I wish the Constitution which is offered would have been more perfect, but I sincerely believe it's the best that one that can be obtained at this time. Because it's a living document and can be changed, people were able to add things and make improvements over time. These were called the amendments. America had thought about 33 different additions or changes to the Constitution. Some of the most important changes to the Constitution were that of the first 10 amendments. And if you wanna know what we call that, some of you may have heard, it's called the Bill of Rights. Many, many people think these are the most important parts of the, of the uh, Constitution, certainly some of the most important amendments that guarantee specific rights that we have, including the rights to freedom, religion, speech and assembly, protections against search in criminal cases, and rights to have a trial, protections against cruel and unusual punishments, and a number of other important rights. I would say those amendments are ones that judges see every single day in court. 
the Bill of Rights, or the first 10 amendments, include important rights such as, as I already mentioned, the freedom of religion, but also freedom of speech and the press, freedom of assembly, which means people can gather together peacefully and have an opportunity to be heard, and freedom uh, to address the government. What did the amendments say about women and minorities? It's really important that a lot of changes were made since the original Constitution. At the time that the Constitution was first enacted, there were a lot of problems with it, and it's only through these amendments that we were able to make it a more fair document for everybody in our society. One of the first things that it says is that we are all equal. Slavery was abolished through the amendments. It's hard to imagine that with the first document that was created, that was something that was still allowable, but thankfully our Constitution allowed these amendments to get rid of that awful and unlawful practice. Equal protection is guaranteed. It helps us knowing that any race can vote and any gender can vote. These all came through important amendments. The 13th Amendment is what abolished slavery. The 14th Amendment guaranteed equal protection under the law so that everyone no matter your race or your gender or your ethnicity or disabilities or any other thing that makes you uniquely you should not change that you get fair process before the court and in our world. The 15th Amendment ensures that anybody, any race can vote. And the 19th Amendment, which we are celebrating this year, the 100th anniversary of, ensures that any gender can vote. So why do we think the Constitution might be important to you? The Constitution protects you and your family, your parents, your grandparents, and thinking into the future, your children and your grandchildren from a government that's controlled by one person or one group. We don't want to have just one individual holding all of the power. The con Constitution guarantees you freedoms that are not found everywhere in the world. In some countries, you're not allowed to practice your own religion freely or to gather or to assemble or to peacefully protest about things that matter to you. Those are things and rights that our Constitution guarantees. The con Constitution guarantees that laws will be applied equally and fairly to you. The Constitution also guarantees you the right to vote as soon as you are 18 years old. That's the 26th Amendment that does ensure that anyone who is 18 and older can vote. We have an election coming up and it's really an important time. A lot of people are talking about this right because getting out your voice and being able to vote. Now obviously all of you are not 18 yet and you can't vote, but your parents are going to vote. And it's important that everybody uses that right because that's unique in our constitution and it really helps make our government different in that way. Our Constitution also says that jurors are people in the community who decide things that happen in court. You may think that the judge makes all the decisions, but it's not true. One of the things that makes our system of justice fair, makes the third branch fair, is that we have people from the community, which may be your family members, uh, people that you know, anyone who's older than 18 or 18 and older can come in and serve as a juror. And they have that big responsibility to listen to the facts and listen to the arguments and decide in a case who is right. And it's really only at that time that the judge who presides over the case would decide then the consequences. We make sure that it's a fair process but it's really our jurors that make sure it's a fair system. So it's a really important right, and it's something that is guaranteed through the Constitution. As I've already said, jurors can be your moms and your dads and everyone who is 18 years of age and older. So when you're 18 and you get that letter in the mail, I look forward to a time that you'll come down and be part of this process. I really do believe that jurors take their obligation very seriously and that they always do try to do what is fair and it helps our system in so many ways. I want to thank you again for participating in this. I know that remote learning is really challenging right now. We wish we could be there with you in person, but we are so glad that you let us into your classroom remotely on behalf of the Court Community Outreach Committee and the Court Legislative Liaison Committee. Thank you again and enjoy your school year. Thank you.